Greg Olson joining us here on Sports Seriously today. Greg, there's so much I want to chat with you about from the NFL, but first, let's start with the return of Titan University. It seemed like such a smash hit when you and Travis and George first started it. So it's coming back for another year. I mean, how much has this thing grown? Yeah, it's really remarkable. You know, we, when we tell people that we've only been doing this now for this is our third year. And, and really, it just started from just a text message chain that George and I were on shortly after I, I had retired back in 2021. Um, he he kind of sent out the the invite for me to come down to Nashville, where he and, and a bunch of other NFL tight ends kind of live in the offseason to train and said, hey, would you want to come down here for a couple of days one day, maybe come out on the field with us, share some stuff with the young guys? And I was like, absolutely. So it went from five to like 10 guys, you know, that were coming. And, you know, George and I were like, you know, there's other positions that do this. You know, this could be a larger event than just like an informal get together. So we had we, we called Travis and, and Travis was was eager and willing to, to be a part of it, which obviously brought a lot of credibility having George and Travis a part of it. And um, we sent out invitations and we were just blown away. And the first year we had about 50 guys um, that came out. We did it in Nashville. And. Last year we had 85. You know, last year we moved it to to the campus of Vanderbilt, and you know they opened up their facilities to us. We really have a lot of space, and we're able to accommodate a lot of guys. So yeah, we're here in our third year. Um, Charmin has come back as our big sponsor um, for the second year as our presenting sponsor. So we're thankful for that. There's some community engagement stuff that we do with the literacy program with Bridgestone. So we get to tie in the community of, of Nashville and Tennessee, but then also really hunker down for about two or three days with you know, with about 80, 85 guys from all over the league at all ages of experience um, to do all things tight end. So it's, it's a really fun experience being around the guys. And as a former player, it's fun for me to be a part of. You mentioned Travis, who's really cemented himself as one of the greatest tight ends to ever play the game. Of course, alongside guys like you, Gronk, Tony G. Uh, at this moment, where do you think or where would you rank Travis on that list of all time great tight ends? Yeah, he's he's on the Mount Rushmore for sure. You know, he he's in that top three or four. I think I said this last year actually on a live broadcast uh, of one of his games. I think another couple years, another year or two of the production that he's had over these last call it seven eight. Um, I I never thought in a million years anyone would be able to catch Tony. I think Tony's long Tony Gonzalez, his longevity in conjunction with his productivity just put his numbers just so out there. I think when you factor in Travis's consistency, his production of where he is now on the all-time rankings, and now you throw in he's won multiple Super Bowls, he's you know holds so many playoff records, so many postseason records. He's he's just as well-rounded productivity-wise as any player who's ever played the position. So I think in another year or two, I think we could be having the conversation that Travis sits atop that whole list, which is saying a lot when you start thinking of some of the names that have played tight end you know, over the years. Darren Waller, he mentioned, I think it was last year, he put, of course, Travis on that list, but he put himself on that list of top tight ends. Uh, what did you think about him being traded to the Giants? And also, how much does a tight end of his caliber really have the possibility of changing a team as a whole? Yeah, so I, you mentioned guys that I saw for the first time at TEU, and, and two years ago was the first time I was ever around in person uh, Darren Waller. Obviously, I'd watched him from far. He kind of took the league by storm and kind of, broke out onto the scene, um, but I never saw him up close and personal. When I saw him on the field with some of the other best players in the world at his position, I remember leaving that camp and be like, this guy, he just looks different, right? The way he runs, his body type, he's, he, he looks like a power forward in the NBA, just, but he's running around. He's really impressive, and he's got a great approach and a great mental you know, you know, way he approaches the game. So I, he's a guy that made such an impact on me a couple of years ago at TEU. So to see all of his success that he's had, you know, obviously out with the Raiders it is not a surprise. Now with him going to the Giants, I think it's a huge addition for Daniel Jones. I think he's a huge piece for that offense. That offense last year, they were solid. Obviously they won a playoff game, you know, they beat Minnesota, but the offense had a, you know, kind of smoke and mirrors a little bit. They were looking for like true marquee, talented guys at the at the wide receiver positions well they're getting one now right he, he is a marquee playmaker in the league um as a pass catcher so if he can stay healthy and he can be the guy that we saw you know a year or two ago um out with the Raiders I, I think they're getting one of the best in the league they're getting an all pro caliber you know elite level caliber playmaker so I, I I expect him to do really good things I think Brian Dable the head coach slash coordinator play caller whatever you want to call him um <laughs> he knows how to use tight ends he, he knows how to get them the ball he knows how to use them as a weapon so I thought that trade was genius 
I think that's going to go a long way in just making that Giants offense a little bit more dynamic maybe than what we saw last year. I want to build the ultimate tight end with you. I want to give you some traits, and I want you to tell me which player, either past or present, you're going to pick for each one. And you can only use one player uh, or use a player once, though. So here uh, are the categories. So pass catching. Who would you put on there? I think you got it. Uh, man. Kind of I mean, it's the, the two guys we've talked. I, I, obviously, Tony Gonzalez, his production over time. But I think right now is just a pure pass catcher. I'm not sure anybody has done it the way Travis Kelsey has done it. I think he has changed how tight ends are used, their consistent production, year in, year out, week in, week out. Um, I think Travis, I, I think Travis or Tony, I think you'd have to say they're the best true, just true pass catching guys of the position ever. Yeah. Okay. Strength, strength alone. Who would you put on there? <laughs> You know, probably Gronk. I think Gronk's physicality, his body, his size, his his play style. You know, he wasn't looking to run around guys. He wasn't looking to be real cute and fancy with his routes. He didn't run his routes like Travis does where he's, you know, real crafty. And it, Gronk was so big and strong, and he was so hard for guys to, to, to keep in front of him. And his big catch radius, uh, you know, ability to catch the ball over the top of his head and over the top of guys, he was just such a physical mismatch. And then obviously – he was so good in the run game. So I think from a physical approach, that was Gronk's greatest strength and made him obviously one of the best to ever do it. And, and, and you know, so such a challenging matchup, you know, for 10 years. Yeah. All right. Vision. Who who would lead that in, in that category? Mm. I would pick me, but I'm not going to pick me. Okay. You can um, pick yourself. <laughs> no, I can't pick myself. Ugh, yeah, I think so that's a humble. good question. I would say like a guy like Jason Witten, you know, I think a guy like Witten, I, the reason I always, uh, you know, had such respect for, for Witten was I kind of saw a little bit of myself in that game where, you know, maybe we weren't as fast and physically dominant as some of these other guys, but, you know, we were open. You know, the thing about Witten is he was, he was open for a reason. It wasn't because he ran the fastest. It wasn't because he was the biggest and the strongest. He understood coverage. He understood where to be. He understood you know, body control and leverage. And he was just a true art artist of the position. So I think Witten's ability to, again, be so productive for so long, um, his football IQ, his, uh, his intelligence and feel on the field, um, I think was a big part of that. All right, last two, speed. Who do you think needs um, some speed? When I think speed, uh, Vernon Davis is oh, a guy okay. that I think in a straight line race – <laughs> Might have been the fastest tight end. He ran like four Jeez. three eight at the combine. Um, you know, I think in a, just a dead vertical linear sprint off the top. Maybe Kyle Pitts was maybe now in like a like a modern like a recent guy maybe in that okay. area. But I, I think in a full on race, I'm not sure anybody is beating <laughs> Vernon. Vernon was he was a different he was a different animal now as far as his ability to run. All right, blocking, last one. Blocking. You mentioned Gronk for pure strength, but blocking. Who, who, who yeah, so I already, best I already picked Gronk, so I think I'm going to pick uh, Kittle. I, I think what's remarkable about George okay. is he's not the biggest guy. He doesn't weigh 270 pounds, 265 pounds. He's not. But, man, what they ask him to do in that offense, which is kind of abnormal in today's modern NFL is to have your star pass catching tight end also carry the load of the run game and the pass protection and stuff. And in that Kyle Shanahan offense, they are a run first team. They don't make any mistakes about it. They are physical. They're going to try to get after you. And George is at the top of the list. I mean, he is, he has a critical must have block on almost every single scheme they run. And, and I've always given George a lot of credit for the, what, the way he throws his body around, how physical he is in the run game, pass game. So I, I, I think, one of the best offenses in the league, one of the most physical offenses in the league, I think is so good because of the way George plays and because of how willing and able he is to do the non-pass catching things. I think he's as good as anybody who's done it. Jeez, that list. That's a solid list. It's I like list. that. Okay. Oh, Lord have mercy. All right. Well, uh, you know, there are, of course, quite a few storylines heading into the 2023 season already. None bigger than Aaron Rodgers now competing for the Jets. And as a native of New Jersey, uh, how do you see the area embracing him? Because it's obviously very different from Green Bay. 
Yeah, I, I think they're going to love it. I think right now with, with the Jets adding him and and some of the other young promising players, they they made they made some they made a mark last year. I know they came up short and were a little disappointing there at the end, but mm-hmm. you know we called that game where he they, the Jets beat Aaron Rodgers in Lambeau Field last year, which was at the time an upset considering how young they were, um, pretty much on both sides of the ball. But I think with the young talent the Jets have, um, I, I think Robert Sala is a really good coach. I think they have a really good staff. Now all of a sudden you bring in. You know somebody like Aaron. Uh, I think right now New York is is losing their minds. I think Jets fans finally <laughs> feel like this is our moment finally. we've been waiting for 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 a couple you know for a decade or so. Um, and then you factor in what the Giants did last year. I mean the Giants were the were the story of the season as far as expectations and what they were able to do, winning a playoff game, going up to Minnesota, not only making it but winning a playoff game. I think far surpassed what everyone thought Brian Dable could do in his first year up there. So I think between the Giants and the Jets, I think. North North Jersey slash New York is about uh, is is probably feeling as confident going into an NFL season combined as they have in a very long time. Let's talk about the division you resided in for nine years of your career, the NFC South. Man, this thing looks wide open once again. I mean, does any one team stand out to you as a cut above the rest at this point? You know, I, I think it's a really interesting division. I think it's a lot of, you know, teams that are starting fresh at quarterback. And, and I think it always starts at quarterback, uh, you know, every team across the league. And, you know, you look with Carolina, you know, of course, making the big trade with Chicago, trading up, taking Bryce Young. So obviously there's a lot of expectations and a lot of eyeballs on Bryce and, you know, what he's going to be able to do early on. Um, but I think Carolina is a surprisingly better, better roster than people maybe give him credit for based on years past. I think if Bryce can just play good, solid football, I think they're going to surprise a lot of people. Um, obviously, Tampa Bay moving on from Tom Brady. Um, there's a lot of questions there, quarterback. So some turnover there. Um, you know, so that now Derek Carr going into the division, leaving the Raiders. Now with with the Saints, I think you know they've got to feel pretty good about you know solidifying that with a proven veteran who's played at a high level um, throughout his career. Um, but again, it's still change. It's still turnover. You're not exactly sure, and then. We got to see, you know, see how Atlanta shakes out. They kind of <laughs> went through a couple of different guys last year. Is Desmond Ritter going to be the guy that they stick with, or are they going to move on? So, I think as long as there's such uncertainty with so many teams at quarterback, I think you can really throw the whole division in a bucket and shake it around and pull a team out. And I think that's going to be one of the more fun division races. Um, and I'm not saying this as a homer, but I, I really do think Carolina is going to surprise people. I don't think anyone's considering them as a playoff team. They almost were one last year, and I think they're going to be better this year than they were last year. Ooh, okay. On the other side of the country, your former teammate Christian McCaffrey is in a great situation with the Niners. Unfortunately, their quarterback situation, as you know, is far from certain at this point. How do you see that playing out with you know Brock Purdy, Trey Lance, Sam Darnold, all on the depth chart at this point? Yeah, I think, again, I, I, you would, I, I would make the argument that the 49ers – if they didn't have such uncertainty, again, it's a huge uncertainty, so it's a big what if, but if they didn't have such uncertainty at the quarterback position, they probably have the best roster in the NFL. I think position by position, both sides of the ball, proven players, manufacturing Kyle Shanahan and that staff, I think it's the best team in football. It's just unfortunately their one question mark is the most important. It's the most uh, critical component to the team. So I think based on how Brock Purdy comes back, based on how the quarterback situation shuffles. I think Sam Darnold's a good, solid player. I think um, he's shown flashes. He played well last year at the end of the year here in Carolina. So I think if they can get some decent quarterback play early, which Kyle Shanahan always gets good quarterback play. He's the master at it. If Brock comes back and can play as well as he did last year, then you imagine he's the guy. But is Trey Lance back healthy? So it's a it's a very interesting dilemma that the 49ers find themselves in what otherwise should be an off season of hope an off season of, you know, they're a Brock Purdy injury last year from probably making the Super Bowl, and uh, kind of came all crashing down in that game. He got injured. So it's going to be, that's going to be a fascinating storyline to watch unfold. How does Brock Purdy come back? How does Trey Lance respond to everything he's been through in his early career? And then Sam Darnold, is he the, is he this year's surprise out of nowhere veteran that gets a fresh new start and and plays good football? So you got three very different careers unfolding, and probably the cha- history says that all three of those guys will probably get a chance to play at some point. 
With the NFL season right around the corner, could you tell us how you're personally preparing for your role as a Fox analyst? And I know you've hit on it plenty already, but uh, like, does, is a team planning to integrate Brady into the fold? How how are you planning for you know this upcoming season for yourself? How's that all shaking up for you? Yeah, so I mean, really, right now, my prep is just following the league, just keeping track of the storylines. It's gonna go, it's gonna kind of go dark here for the next you know month and a half or so before training camp kicks off at the end of July. So. You know, the draft is a big thing. Free agency is a big thing. Coaching carousel of what coaches now move on to other places, what players are moving around. Just keeping up with the storylines of the league is just good for context. Just understanding every year the league kind of almost restarts fresh and you got to make sure you stay up on it because guys are wearing different uniforms they're in different places. Coaches that you're used to being coordinators are now head coaches or vice versa. So there, there's always the one constant in the NFL is change. So um, as far as in the offseason, it's really just staying on top of that. And then, you know, I, I, you know, Tom, you know, we're going to have our crew from this year as we did last year. Ch Tom's made it clear he's going to take this year off and and, and get some much deserved uh, time away from football and spend some time doing what he now wants to do at this stage in his life. And where that comes to for next year, we'll worry about that then. But right now, uh, I'm excited to be back with my crew. We had an awesome time you know, culminating in the Super Bowl a couple months ago, uh, which was which obviously kind of a surreal experience and and one that I'll never forget. So we're going to call some big games this year again, and um, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, sports fans. If you want to see more conversations with athletes and stars, check out these videos right here, and be sure to subscribe for more from USA Today Sports.